Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and this is the fourth and last video in this series. I've been making this owl mask for quite some time now. It took me a long time because it's spring and I had to go plant an awful lot of things out in the garden, um, and then that took some time. Um, this owl mask was inspired by my first cozy mystery novel. It's the owl mask that was stolen uh, from my main character. She, uh, Utah O'Brien is also a paper mache artist, but she gets to do an awful lot more fun things than I do. So uh, this this belongs uh, with the first book. It's called The Owl Thief. It happens to be on sale right now, so if you're interested in meeting Utah O'Brien, now would be the time to go grab a copy for yourself. Uh, that's the Kindle version, of course. Um, in the first videos, I showed you how I made a uh, oil-based clay mold for this. It's a positive mold, and then some shop towel mache was put over the oil-based clay to create the skin for the um, for the mask. And then in this video, I'm going to show you how I got the paper mache off of the oil-based clay. It's empty now, as you can see. It's there's nothing there but paper mache. Um, I'm also going to show you how I finished up the edges and then most importantly how I got the color on here. The base color is done with some colored tissue paper which was really a lot of fun to do because it also gave it a really interesting feathery texture. Um, and uh, the final details were put on with acrylic paint. So let me show you how that was done. Once the paper mache was completely dry all the way through, I took it off of the bowl that I used uh, just to put the clay model over uh, to make it nice and round, and then I pulled the aluminum foil off. The aluminum foil was just to keep the oil from the clay from getting all over the bowl. And then it was just a matter of starting to pick and pull at that clay and pull it out of the paper mache. You want to make sure that your paper mache is totally dry or you could end up distorting the shape of your mask if you try taking the clay out too soon. I used some scissors to trim the edges, although a knife, uh, some sort of utility knife or craft knife would have worked a lot better. And then I covered the edges with one layer of the shop towel mache. I wanted to do that just to give a nice rounded edge instead of having it be kind of sharp the way it was when I cut it. I also covered over those, uh, the ear pieces. You can see the aluminum foil stayed inside the ears. And I wanted to get that covered up so that it looked really nice when you turn the mask over. And then I painted on one more coat of the gesso recipe. That's the joint compound and glue that I used as paste for the shop towel mache. I already had some tissue paper on hand. I bought it several years ago from the crepe paper store online. They've got lots of different colors and I just happened to have all the colors that I needed. I'm using a Liquitex heavy duty acrylic gel uh, as the paste. It's a little bit tricky because you can see it goes on milky white and then dries clear and the only reason that matters is that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to know what colors you're getting when you uh, overlap two different colors of the transparent tissue paper. In the end it really didn't make much difference in this project. Uh, you don't have quite as much control over things though as you might if you were just going to paint with uh, acrylic paint. I used a little tool that I happened to find sitting around. I don't know what it was for actually uh, when I first bought it, but it turned out to be really helpful in this case. Because I'm wrinkling the tissue paper, you want to make sure that you got plenty of the gel underneath the tissue paper so that it moves when you're uh, using the tool and pushing it all together. And I ended up with some really nice feathery texture using that uh, that method. There were a few places where I wanted the feathers to, re to just seem really fluffy and thicker and so what I did was I put the gel on a, on one side of a piece of tissue paper and then folded the tissue paper over so it was doubled and then I used that almost um, like I was sculpting clay pushing it around and um, texturing it so that it made it a little a little more feathery than it could have been if it was just one layer. Uh, there was a lot of sculpting done with the tissue paper and it, it was um, it was almost like using the paper mache clay in a lot of ways because you could get the the tool marks in there, you could get the, the feathers going in a certain direction and it made it a lot kind of, I don't know, 
uh, softer, I guess you could say. To get the base colors, I used the black, of course, then the orange. I used a little bit of a tan color over the orange in order to soften it. I used black up at the top on his forehead and put gray over that in order to soften it up. And then the other colors are just uh, the black, the white, and and there's a little bit of an oatmeal color right on the fluffy part that goes over his beak and I used a yellow tissue paper for his eyes but it wasn't bright enough and so I went over that with a little bit of Hansa yellow acrylic paint I let that dry really well before I started adding the black pupils to get the pupils on I folded over several pieces of black tissue paper and then drew around a cap that happened to be just the right size uh, to make sure that I was cutting it out round and because I'm cutting both of them at exactly the same time I know my pupils are going to end up being the same size I also want to make sure that the gel is on there really really thick and uh, wet if you get it on there thick enough once you place the pupil on the eye, you can move it around a little bit to make sure that it's in the right place. After the acrylic gel was all dry, I mixed up some acrylic glazing liquid. I'm using a golden brand with my black. Uh, here I'm putting it around the eyes. I, I happen to like using it around the eyes. There's always that black stripe there on an awful lot of animals. And if you um, shake at all or, or if you just uh, make a boo-boo and you end up with black paint up on the uh, yellow part of the eye, it's really easy if you have the uh, glazing liquid in there to just pull it back off again with a wet brush or uh, a paper towel. Uh, if, you're, if you're just using acrylic paint sometimes it dries so quickly that you have to start over the eye all the way from the beginning and start over. Um, but I use the acrylic glazing liquid on a lot of other places on the mask as well because I want to use the texture that I built in with the tissue paper to create a lot of um, uh, different variations in the feather patterns. The feathers are not all one color. I used the glazing liquid and black right around that black line around the edge of the cheek ruff. Uh, I paint the the paint and glazing liquid on and then pull most of it off with a wet paper towel and that blended those two colors together. And I used the acrylic glazing liquid and white on the gray part of his forehead. I'm wiping most of it off with a wet paper towel and this is something you want to practice especially with something as textured as this is. Orange part on his cheek ruff I used a dry brush technique and the white just brushing it over the top edges of those uh, little textured lines that are uh, sticking up from the wrinkled tissue paper on the owl's forehead it has a pattern that almost looks the same as a barred rock hen um, it's black white gray and all kind of in spots so I use the uh, the dry brush technique on that as well making little lines and spots and just trying to get a little bit of texture and interest up there on that big uh, gray spot up above his forehead then I came down and did the same thing just on the very edges of that rough um, with the black so you've got the black the white and the orange all mixed in together uh, very very lightly in that place because I, I just wanted a little bit of interest but I didn't want to get too carried away his eyelid is white and there's a white line under the black line around his eyes and then finally I make a reflection spot with cerulean blue and white uh, just the paint I'm not using any glazing liquid now and then just for fun in the middle of that blue spot I also add one little speck of pure titanium white so now he's all done except for the varnish and for a little bit of black paint on the back uh, a hanger that I'll just put on there with some hot glue and now that I've been thinking about it I think I will also use some clear 
fingernail polish on those eyes. Since I'll use a matte varnish, uh, the, the shininess of the fingernail polish would really make those eyes pop and look really, really special. So he's all done. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Come on in and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.